This is the Andon Star ADSM 302 digital microscope. It was provided by the manufacturer for review purposes, so while I didn't purchase this item, I am confident in its quality and ease of use. While it won't replace my stereoscope, it does have many practical uses, and I was surprised at what can be accomplished using it after some practice. If you're interested in purchasing this or other micro soldering equipment, please check out the links in the video description. At the top of the LCD, you have an HDMI mini output, which is great for presentation. Just connect the cable that comes with it to any HDMI capable display, and now you have a much larger image to work with. There's a USB port for the power supply, a micro SD slot for capturing videos and still images, and an AV out port. It doesn't come with an AV cable though, so if that's what you plan to use, you'll have to provide your own. Setting up is simple. Connect the power cord at the base for lighting and the micro USB cable to the display and you're ready to power up. By the way, it may turn itself on while you plug everything in, but the instructions say that that is not unusual and it did happen to me the first time I connected the power supply. The two flexible LED lights allow you to easily adjust the angle of illumination and they feel surprisingly sturdy. There's an inline remote that adjusts brightness and powers the scope on and off. You have a coarse adjustment knob on the side and can fine tune the image by twisting the focus controller. The lights can be disassembled and replaced if necessary just by twisting off a cap at the end. The mode button on the LCD allows you to record video or still images and play them back. There are a ridiculous number of settings built into this microscope. Most can be adjusted by using the remote which is included but does not come with batteries. Also, you're going to have to hold the remote right next to the LCD in order for it to work, and I'm fairly convinced that the infrared receiver is on the back side where the ports are, so it's a little awkward and kind of counterintuitive as far as how that works. Some of the options included are zoom, adding crosshairs, date and time, language, frequency, resolution, sequence, cross curve, quality, sharpness, contrast, white, balance, color, ISO, the list just keeps going on and on. From what I can tell, these are the same settings that you'd find in any late model DSLR camera. Image quality for both still images and video looks great, and that's coming from a non-photographer who just used the default settings. The digital zoom looked much better than I would have expected, although at its max setting of 4x, you will start to see a significant amount of noise. I started out with a practice board just to get the hang of working in a two-dimensional environment, which was my biggest concern about this scope. That part wasn't nearly as difficult as I thought it would be, but getting used to putting your hands in one position and move them the right way while your eyes are looking somewhere else, well, that took a little more getting used to. What makes that matter even more complicated is that if you choose to use the HDMI output, the LCD is automatically disabled, so you basically get to choose between one display and another. I figured at the least we should be able to work on larger projects like micro USB ports, so I pulled out an old beat up phone with a pretty nasty looking port out of my spare parts box, and I was in fact able to replace it without much trouble. Something like a display connector on an iPhone or an iPad will be easy enough using hot air, but what about going smaller? Recently, I published a video showing how to replace the antenna connector on an iPhone 6, and this is the scope that I use for that repair. Last on the list was a small component, and I can say that something like an 0201 is doable, and even a smaller adjacent component that I bumped on accident found its way home with some help. And that was without using flux, which I don't recommend, but there was little to lose on this dead logic board. All in all, I think this is a pretty decent scope, especially if you want to be able to show people what you're looking at without spending a lot of money to do it. When it comes to the actual repairs, it's going to vary from one person to the next, but once again, I don't plan on replacing my stereoscope with this. However, for something that's small and portable with a very tiny footprint on your workbench, you might be surprised at what you can get done with this. If you found the video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out our weekly Tech Talk live stream. Have a great one and thanks for watching.